Boy, oh boy, this sure looks fun. That was my dog, Buddy, Buddy McGee. Unfortunately, he wasn't talking about this tutorial. He was watching a cooking show and they're about to make coco van and I don't even know what that is. But this tutorial has its own fun parts and one of the most fun parts is that we can um, change uh, this text and it still stays live. Okay, let's get this show started by going to File, New, and this effect is a little bit more processor intensive than the last one. So I'm using a smaller size canvas, 1920 by 1080 at 72 DPI, and then it's really easy to create a preset. You just hit this little plus sign and you got your own custom preset, and those are really handy and save a lot of time. Uh, so let's go in here and let's get, and I wish I didn't have to click that twice, but it's not a big deal. Uh, O F F S E T, and uh, if I try and change the font here without this selected, it's not going to work for some reason. But if I click this arrow tool, then I can go and find the font that I want. Equalize. So this is a free font from dfont or da dafont dot com, and uh, this will work. So you might not see that symbol window, and to get it, you just go to not select, but view, studio, and symbols. So we've got our symbols here, and we got sync turned on, but we just don't have a symbol yet. And it's really easy with this selected. Just take a note, we just got this one layer here. With that selected, you hit the create button on your symbols, and now we've got a symbol group. This is the group, and this is the actual object within the symbol group. So that's just the way that it works, because you can have multiple objects inside a symbol and then they would just all be in that specific group. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, one of the, the kind of tricky things. And I just Alt-Drag and now I have a, a second symbol group. And uh, if I go in and let's say, let's say I scale this down. We've got sync still turned on. I'll just press T for my type tool and start typing and you can see uh, these are linked. When I change one, the other changes. And if I say change a color here, they both get that color. And if I if I unsync, this is this is when when it gets kind of tricky. Because what if I just want them to have different colors? Uh, so if I unsync, I change the color. Well, I don't have anything selected, so that's the first step. Select it, change the color, turn sync back on, and then what you would expect is that it would work, but just with different colors. Uh, but for some reason, um, and I'm not an expert at this point on, on symbols, but for some reason that breaks the sync. And uh, you never want to break the sync. Uh, so th this, let's just make sure we turn sync back on. Okay, so I gotta undo back to where they were both still. So this should be it. And I turned sync actually on first. Okay, so now they're both synced up. And to get around that issue, what you gotta do is add a effect, a color overlay effect. So I got sync still turned on here and I could add a color overlay, except it's adding it to both layers. So. I turn sync off and then I can add a color overlay and turn sync back on. And magically now it works. So let's actually get this to be the right text. So that's kind of the, uh, the tricky part and uh, the thing to look out for as you're working with this effect. Now it's just a matter of making a bunch of copies so I will hold down alt and drag you don't have to do this all at once like I'm doing here but it's just kind of faster this way so now I'm gonna turn sync off and I'm gonna start adding uh, different color overlays to each of these layers and let's put this somewhere in here we can adjust the scale a little bit and position if we want. And I'll grab this one here. Let's add a color overlay. And 
I'll uh, scale this one a little bit and uh, just keep going on in in this fashion here. Let's, maybe we want a yellow one. And you could repeat some of these colors if you want, like another um, pink one or yellow one. You can click and drag this eyedropper over the color you want. And then it gives you the color in this little swatch. You just have to click on it. And that's how the, uh, how the eyedropper works. Let's start to make some of these like significantly um, offset since that's the name uh, of the uh, the uh, text there. So uh, let's keep going. And um, I think I'm going to grab another yellow one. So click and drag the eyedropper on the color and then click the swatch that it creates. So, so some of these are getting completely obscured. So you might have to shift things around until uh, you get the result that you want. And uh, this last one, let's give it a... Um, Let's give it maybe another blue. I don't know this where this is gonna land in the in the stack, but so that's the look that we've got so far. And and you could go in and drop drop the opacity on some of these if you want, or even add any of these effects in here. But I'm gonna turn sync back on, and hopefully, if all worked out well, you could see that we've got this effect and everything is still live, which is nice. Uh, I would just do a better job of um, lining these up. You could also let's just turn sync off for a little bit here. If I wanted to, I could start um, rotating some of these around. And um, maybe I'll make this one smaller because it looks like it's blocking a lot of other things. Let's see. Um, so the, the sky is really the limit for this um, but at a certain point you just gotta say all right it's time to wrap this thing up and um, to do to to wrap this up what i'm gonna do is select all these symbols let's let's just turn sync back on in case i um, forget and then make some breakable changes uh, so selecting all these i'm gonna right click you could press Control g but right click and then go to group and now what i could do is add not a color overlay but this time i'll add an outline and uh let's make the radius bigger so we could do that and then i'm actually going to uh gonna pop this out here to make it easier to work with and that way i could see my layers and my effects together so now I've got an outline on that. And what if I want a, another outline? You just group your group. So this time I'm gonna use the shortcut Control G. And I've, if I expand that out, you can see I've grouped my group. And now I have the option to add a whole new outline. And I'm gonna pick maybe one of my yellows here. So click and drag over the color, hit that little swatch that we've created. And uh, I can make this one significantly larger and um, can just keep going. This is where, uh, at least for my computer, it starts to slow down when I start grouping groups and adding effects to each one of them. It um, takes a little bit for, uh, for the thing to calculate the, uh, the effects on top of effects inside of groups. So uh, yeah, so just Control G. So now I've got a, uh, another group and I got another option for outline and um, that's a little bit much and uh, I can pick a color that I want and then then I could just control G again and uh, this will be my last one I swear and if you need to if your um, if your outline is not big enough, you can always type your number in here. If your slider uh, is running out of space, but um, so hit T to get my type tool, and then I just mouse over the text. So like when I'm here with the little A, I know I'm going to start typing new text. But when I mouse over here and I see that little insert, I 
bar thing that I know if I double click, I could select all my text and uh, type something else. And uh, so it's not too bad. It's starting to slow down uh, my computer a little bit, but um, it's still workable. And then if I added other stuff like a, a background layer, one of the nice things about this program is if you, if you hide whatever layer that is slowing things down, it speeds it up immediately. So anything invisible, it's like it doesn't even exist and you could work on your background layers and, and any other, other stuff. And then your processor intensive thing, you just keep it off until you're done. And then at the very end, when you're ready to export as a PDF or a PNG or whatever, just turn everything back on. So uh, that, that really makes up for a lot of that the slowdown. Okay, so that is the offset text effect.